evening everyone. I'd like to call the April 4th, 2022 Select Board meeting to order. We'll start with a public hearing. Um, public hearing is, or actually I should say call the public hearing to order. The public hearing is for the name change of Mount Street to Porter Place. Any comments? My name is Pete Kelly. I live at Mount Street and I'm known. I would like to change it to Porter Place due to conflicts with the 100 Mount Street in Barry, Vermont, that has the exact same zip code and everything that my address has. Uh, to your knowledge, was there any objections to this, Pete, from any other neighbors? No, in fact, the only, the only other neighbor is Tyler Ladd, and he's in complete agreement with everything. Any other comments? Hearing none, I will take and uh, see here. We might close, the, we can close the hearing. You have a motion? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> now I would like to call the uh, April 4th, 2022. Berlin Select Board meeting to order. Uh, with us is Flo Smith, uh, Dave Sawyer. On my right is Carl Parton and Joe Staub. With us also is uh, Vince Conti and our treasurer, Diane Isabel. Uh, let's see. Um, additions or changes to the agenda? I do have a couple. Um, the office and garage security system update, uh, I would like to present that and also cover a, uh, the fitness court funding letter uh, that we received as well as far as the grant funding and, and the status of that uh, and update you and, and get a decision on um, whether or not we want to move forward at risk with something, but I'll explain that when, when we get to that point. But those are the only two additions that I have. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, any public comment tonight? Uh, I have a request from our uh, town clerk uh, to read these, this uh, letter during the public comment from her uh, to address the, uh, the residents and the board. Okay. So it says, to the residents of the town of Berlin and the Berlin Select Board dated April 4th, 2022, thank you for this opportunity to address you, the board, as well as all Berlin residents through this letter. For the last 20 years, I have served as the elected Berlin town clerk I've always taken this office very seriously and done my very best to serve the residents of Berlin first. I've loved doing this job. Through all of those 20 years, the town clerk's office has always been very respected by the residents of Berlin, but not always respected by the various select boards. Some select boards have seemed to treat the town clerk and assistant town clerk positions as unimportant and not as worthy as other positions within the town. A previous select board member even called what we do menial. Uh, the fact that the town clerk is still in an elected position in Berlin has been an issue with some board members in the past because it and the assistant town clerk are the last positions that the select board do not control. If the town clerk's position ever becomes a select board appointed position, the residents of Berlin will lose the last employees in town government that work solely for them. Every position in the town will then work for the select board, not the residents. I, for one, hope that it always stays elected if for no other reason that the town clerk and assistant town clerk Always have to be aware of and follow state statutes and current laws in every part of the job and ensure others follow them also. If the town clerk and assistant town clerk ever answer to the select board only, my fear is that following the statutes and laws could then become less important than keeping their jobs. For the last 15 years, I've continuously asked only that the salary of the town clerk go back to being treated equally to that of the treasurer as it was for many, many years prior. Even though every other hospital town clerk's salary is much higher, I was also very appreciative when the assistant town clerk's position was increased to full time, but nothing was done at that time to the salary to get closer to being equal to that of other assistant town clerks. I truly thought that some headway had been made last year regarding both positions and going forward it would continue. It became very obvious at the beginning of this year that was not going to happen in either case. The last two years have been the most trying times for everyone. Every town employee has continued to do their jobs in spite of serious medical dangers surrounding all of us. While all boards were meeting remotely because of the danger of in-person <clears throat> meetings, every town employee continued to go to work every day so the town would continue operating. In spite of knowing the dangers, a previous select board member 
even complained because we were not allowing the public into the clerk's office in person. To my knowledge, none of us have gotten even a simple public thank you from the select board for having continued working every day, even when most everything else was shut down. For me personally, trying to continue to do the job of my office, the danger of getting COVID myself, losing my dad to cancer in late 2020, and helping take care of my 90-year-old mother have taken a toll on me these last two years. I no longer need or want to continue trying to get select boards to understand the importance of the town clerk's office or to continue the fight for equality with other town employees. It is for these reasons, with much sadness and a heavy heart, I've come to my conclusion that it's time for someone else to be the Berlin town clerk. Maybe a new person going forward will manage to get the present and future select boards to realize that the town clerk and assistant town clerk positions are just as important to the town and the work done in the office is just as deserving as all of the other positions are. This letter is to announce first to the residents of Berlin and then to the Berlin Select Board my retirement and to officially tender my resignation as the Berlin Town Clerk effective June 30th, 2022. It's been my honor and privilege for the last 20 years to serve the residents of Berlin as your Town Clerk. Respectfully, Rosemary Morris, Berlin Town Clerk, 2002-2022. Any other public comment? Hearing none, um, uh, discussion of public works position, Rob? Yes, shall I come up? Sure. They do have a uh, <coughs> letter, the, the description that was uh, done with you and Tom, and the board, they have a copy of that in their package as well, of the job description. Of the job description. Oh, okay. This one, right. I don't know if you... They have a copy of that. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, well, thank you for having me here tonight. I'm, I'm Rob Allen. I am chairman of the Berlin Public Works Board. Uh, and public works here in Berlin is sewer, sewer and water. Okay, the, the water system is a fairly new system. We've got drilled wells and a reservoir up on the hill by the old... Uh, Dodge Farm up on some of that property. It serves communities, uh, I mean it serves a community here on the hill basically, some residents and commercial properties here on the hill. Uh, the sewer, the sewer system uh, is here on the hill, collects the sewer and there's also collection system down along Route 302 down on the main road. And the sewer is collected at a main point and then pumped to a um, Montpelier system and down to the treatment plant down there. So what our board, I'm just kind of giving an overview here. Our board operates and maintains the water and the sewer systems for, for this area of the town. <clears throat> we are a five person board, uh, but we currently have four members and I don't I can't think that we've had five members actually on our board for about four or five years. Uh, it's hard to get people to, as you know, to, to volunteer for boards. Uh, and ideally, we like to find someone that's got utility or construction experience. It helps with problem solving and, and such. Uh, Dave, Dave has been on our board in the past. Um, As we know, the town of Berlin's experiencing some growth. Um, there's a lot of water and sewer projects in the works, and especially with the town center coming on. There's a lot going on there and in other places, and it's getting to a point where it's really more than a volunteer board can handle and with some part-time assistance. Um, so we're kind of in a feeling it's getting to a point where we need a full-time, needs to be a full-time person to, uh, to operate and maintain the water and sewer. Um, right now we have contractors that, we have a contractor for water that does the operation and maintenance and a contractor for sewer that does the operation and maintenance. Uh, there would be efficiencies to bring it all together and have one person do that. and. Um, our vision would be that it would be a, a town employee, um, but as a board, we don't have hiring authority anyway. We can't hire somebody. Uh, it would have to be the select board, and this person would 
I, I think would answer to the town administrator, probably. Uh, and something important to note is that public works, water, and sewer are self-sustaining. There's, there's no taxpayer dollars that go into maintaining or operating water and sewer. Um, it's all funded by the users of, of those two utilities. Um, and I expect that would continue on even if a, a, if a full-time person were hired, their, their salary and benefits would come out of water and sewer and not any, anything from taxpayer dollars. <clears throat> it would need to be a skilled person. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to read this or not, but mm -hmm. look through it. They'd need to have a license to operate a water system. They need to be knowledgeable of sewer lines and sewer pumps and that kind of thing. And of course, they're not going to fix all these things, but they'd have to be knowledgeable and and call for service when it's needed and that and that kind of thing. The way our contractors do now. So it. It, you know, it's more than just a labor type person. It'd have to be more of a professional position, really, the way we see it. Um, so my objective tonight, really, is just to bring this topic up, get people thinking about it, um, and try to move forward. I, I, I'll take any questions at this point. And how how uh, plentiful are people out there with these skill sets? Certainly, there's there's licensed there's plenty of licensed water operators. Okay. So it'd have to be that would be sort of the minimum, and then choose a, a person that's got some knowledge of sewer as well. That is a licensed water operator. Uh, a question. Yeah, Carl. You mentioned uh, uh, part-time assistants. Were you referring to the contractors that are part-time assistants? Uh, our part-time assistant is uh, the zoning administrator. Okay. He he does, you know, he does a lot of work for us actually. On a, okay. But he only does it part-time. Okay. Um, and and I think we pay, you know, the two contractors that work for us. Their contracts are around ninety thousand dollars a year, combined. Combined. Uh, that was my next question, okay. so thank you. Go Combined, they're about $90,000 a year, kind of as a base contract. And then it, it's more than that for call-outs, like emergency call-outs and, and such. So I think we're over like maybe $110,000 or something like that. So the 90000 for the contractors is actual construction and maintenance, not, not for just uh, organization and, and planning. Right, it's just for maintaining. So, yeah. so I mean, like the sewer contract, he, the the person comes and checks pumps three times a week, uh, does clean, does some cleaning. Uh, a lot of the cleaning though is extra when he does sewer line cleaning, but uh, just general, make sure the system is operating. So my properly. question is, would would that ninety thousand uh, be decreased? Uh, if this position was added, well, I think we think there would be some savings, yes, but you know we haven't had the details to really run the numbers exactly, but um, we think there would be some savings. And if we post this, I take it you would post it as um, as uh, pay based on experience. For sure, I would think so. Yes. Do you have a range in mind? Of salary, so, uh, I would, you know, with salary and benefits, you probably think around eighty grand or something like that. Um, I can interrupt here because we have talked about it, and I did a lot of the okay, research. Okay, okay, great, okay. Diane. Thank so, you. So, um, what Tom was telling us is he thought the base pay should be eighty thousand, okay. and then with benefits, and this would be if they took, you know, like they had the highest benefit as far as the health care, it'd be one hundred and twenty-seven thousand. Okay. Right. <clears throat> and that would be at the, at the low end as far as if this if their base rate is 80000 and if they're going to be doing repairs, then it probably would be even greater than that. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. But again, this would, this would not come out of taxpayer yeah. dollars. This would be funded by the water and sewer mm -hmm. users. I guess I have a follow-up question to that. So as of right now, uh, the funds that are collected 
for water and sewer go into the general fund when there's no, uh, no. So no, they have their own account. They do. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's it's a separate fund in right. you know, in totals called a business fund. Okay. In an ideal situation, when would you like to fill this position? How soon? And do you have a time frame? Well, I don't have a time frame. Mm -hmm. I think this is a discussion period. If it's favorable with people, we'd like to get on it and you know put something add out in May or June or something mm -hmm. like that maybe. Mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. So, Rob, I had a real quick question. Yeah. Indeed, from serving on that board, there's some knowledge that comes with one of these contractors that may be looking to retire soon. Uh, possibly, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So the sooner you had somebody to well, get that's, that knowledge, that, yeah, it, it would be. Things could change in a hurry. Yeah. Um, things could change in a hurry with our contractors, and so. Um, Especially on at the this point, we, I think we're going to keep. You know, there's there's no word of retirement or changing Nothing any yet. contractors or anything, but um, mm -hmm. things could change in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that knowledge needs to get absorbed faster than. than yeah. Yeah. Sooner than later. Sooner than later. Yeah. So this position would free up some of Tom's time too. Yes. I think initially Tom would have to be there to sort of be a transition, yeah. help transition a person into just getting up to speed on knowledge of how the systems work and where everything is. And um, But yeah, this, this would eventually relieve Tom of his, his work with the yeah. board. So if these funds have been separate for a while and they've been working on a separate account, do uh, you feel, I mean, at 120000 a year, that how's that going to impact the funds that are coming in now? Well, it would just affect the rates. and But we're constantly adding people to the sewer and water. So we really are building a group. So more people, obviously, the more we spread out the money. But all the funds do would come out of that business account. And right now, part of Tom's pay is coming out of that account. So if you were to subtract that yeah. as well, yeah. then you could easily pay for the 127. Good point. Yeah. What comes into what comes in for the water and sewer annually? Oh boy, that's a good question. I'm trying to think, it's at least a half a million. Okay. It's more than well, that, I think. Tom, Tom did tell me that the the collective budget for water and sewer is is close to a million dollars. Okay. Yeah, so probably. Yeah, I was thinking just sewer only. But yeah. yeah. And I would agree with that. That's just off the top of my head. And like I said, we keep growing. So if the expansion, though, if the expansion didn't, like, over, you know, because I don't expect it to go up overnight, but mm -hmm. it, at the rate that we are now, it, it, it would support this position? Yeah. If, well, if we stayed stable where we are now, it, it would, would more, more than support okay. this. Okay. Yes. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you're only looking at a, an, an actual increase of around 20000 So you take... The ninety thousand you're paying for the two contractors, mm -hmm. and say if the total with benefits was one hundred and ten thousand, that's a twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, increase. but they're going to need these contractors for a while after this position's hired. It's not yeah, like you're going to get rid of it. Some details are going to be worked out on. It takes take on, a little bit of time on a yeah. transitional period. Yeah, yeah. But that even even the transitional period is only going to be a one shot deal. Right. It's not going to carry over into the next year, <clears throat> next budget cycle. There mm -hmm. was talk. You know, and, and talking with Tom a little bit too, he's briefing me on this of a four to six month transition period yeah. with the with the contractors, and then another couple of additional months with the with the board still in place as well. Um, and there is there is a there is a surplus in the account now that we could easily cover, cover that uh, going forward. Um, and that's if the system yeah. just stayed stable where it is right now without any yeah. growth. Absolutely. And I don't know if I if I mentioned if if we if you were able to hire a full time person, it would be it would really become a uh, public works department for the yeah. town of Berlin, and it would eliminate the board. We would no longer have a public works board. It would be a public works department. Mm -hmm. A one person department, basically. Yeah. Now in the future. You know, maybe you want to work highway in to have a pub, you know, a, yeah, a, a, a bigger public works, a real public works department. But mm -hmm. um. so 
another logistical question. Uh, this is maybe for Vince or uh, I'm looking at office space uh, again with added an added position and wondering where exactly this person would sit. <laughs> Although yeah. so, they're, so they're on the we, we have we have uh, we have looked at it. There's there's some options on the table. Yeah. For example, just one quick chain of thought is um, a job uh, trailer, right outside, uh, and open up the Lister's office for for an individual to sit in there and be based in the Lister's office. They're here one day a week. That, that that's an easy short-term solution. Okay. And all these are, you, you think you've covered all your bases here with your, uh, your, your description? We'll, uh, it's draft and I, I think we'll go over it again. Brad, to make yeah. sure. But it looks to be pretty complete. Mm -hmm. Well, how's the board feel? Do you think we should take and press forward with this? I personally think it's a direction with the town the way it's growing and how and from sitting on that board and seeing some of the stuff that goes on that it's something that needs it needs mm -hmm. to go. You know, uh, like I said, there's there's guys that have been doing this a long time that have information that uh, that somebody needs to have. Yeah. Uh, you know, if something was to yeah, happen, yeah. we'd be in a we'd be in a mess. That's all information that's not written down. Well, it's with it's with contractors. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and who knows what happens? You know how things go these okay. days. But. Okay, Carl. I guess. I guess first a question that is there some way we could get all the documentation that our contractors have done for us and get it in house here? I, we might have a lot of it. I well, imagine, I think we, but we do don't have know where a lot it is, of it. Right? Um, so, so that would be well, good to have a backup just well, in case. Even what if we it's, have, Carl, though, is, yeah. is we have for documentation, right? We have the drawings and the the, the, the mapping of the systems, yeah. and anything the things like that have that. been done. Yeah. We, yeah. we have all of that. I think what. There's James speaking to us the tribal knowledge, right? The right. knowledge. This that guy knows where we've had leaks. He yeah. knows that what we don't have are detailed maintenance records, right? Mm -hmm. So when are things due to be serviced? When was the last time they were serviced? When did they have a problem? That kind of thing um, we don't have, Yeah. right? It's that tribal knowledge. That and this contractor, contractor you'd probably have on. Plus years, right? You'd have him on for a little while to be able to show, you know, certain ways how to fix things and, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Well, certainly, it doesn't sound like we're going to eliminate all contractors, even if we move to the position. I, I guess I, I have to defer to uh, people who have, have knowledge in the system. I guess my only caveat would be that uh, um, just the three meetings I've been to, we're moving from Berlin town and looking more a lot like uh, Berlin city government <laughs> uh, as far as our structure and our growth direction and our... Uh, our staffing, uh, it's interesting how it's moving that way quickly. Although we're a town, it's, it seems like we're emulating uh, Berry City and Montpelier City quickly. Joe? Joe? Um, I'm going to say, you know, I'd be in favor. I, I don't necessarily think you're going to be very long before you're going to have to merge that maybe with the town highway. You know, I just, I'm looking at this and you're looking at people that are going to be running equipment and such. You're still going to be using the contractors, I'm sure, for a period of time. Um, but I, I see this position for the department, let's say, um, growing some with the highway department, um, probably in the very near future. Well. I was going to add that as a liaison, you know, I'm very impressed with the board, mm -hmm. everything that you've done. I think it's very forward thinking going with this. I also think that um, it might be necessary to have an assistant as well as a supervisor because this position is going to require a lot and there's going to be vacations and time off. Well, that it is true. It might be you necessary gotta, to have. Somebody, there's got to be other knowledge among town. Mm -hmm staff somewhere mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if somebody wants to take a vacation. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm also thinking that with the growth that's going to come and what Carl <clears throat> said, we are growing exponentially. And I think 
you know, if not now, very soon in the future, we might need to increase the hiring in this capacity, aside from just this one position. That's the way I'm looking mm -hmm. at it. But I think it's wonderful that you're bringing it forward. I'm very much a proponent of going forward with the hire. So I guess it's just a matter of uh, finding who's out there. Mm -hmm. They can um, get with Vince and work up, uh, go over this job description again and Good. see if you can get it posted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if the board agrees, I'll, I'll work with them. We'll, we'll finalize that with, between the board and Tom and myself and we'll get it out into circulation and see what's out there. Okay. I, I'll wait. throw one more, one more comment out. And uh, anything we could do to really uh, firm up uh, the figures, I guess, as far as what would we, what we might be saving? Uh, what uh, what dollar figure we'd be saving from the zoning administrators' work, uh, from the contractors, and and how much it would cost? I think so. We have. I think what we can do for that to 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 say that we could pinpoint it, really nail it down. Probably not. But what I can do is work with Diane, and we can come up with um, we can come up with obviously the actual costs that we have. And then make a couple of scenarios, right? Okay. Based on experience, so kind just, of a, a range mm -hmm. that each would fall in, yeah. and where we would range. end up. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so we range. could do that. Okay. At the same time, we're we're finalizing the the job description. Anything else, with Rob, or any more, Rob? No, that's it. Thank you for having me tonight. Sure thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, you very much. Your service. Appreciate you, Rob. You're welcome. Uh, let's see here. Police chief update. Hilltop. James? Yeah, thank you for joining me tonight. Um, I just thought it was important to bring to the board's attention some issues we've had regarding the Hilltop and the sheltering program over there. Over the last few weeks, I've been very vocal with the state <clears throat> about the conditions over there and just wanted to keep the board in the loop. Um, just for some context for the newer members of the board, um, we have eight positions within the police department, not including myself. Um, we have two open vacant positions and two officers, um, one is at the academy and one is on family leave. So that leaves us with four officers basically to handle all our shifts. Um, over the last month, we've had 150 calls uh, to the hilltop alone, which is <coughs> extraordinary. Some of those are self-generated, we call them foot patrols or directed patrols. Um, and I did that with the intent of deterring problems that had been happening there. And at the request of the owners, they thought a more visible presence from law enforcement <clears throat> would be helpful. But a majority of those are calls, someone calling us to the hilltop. Anywhere from citizen disputes, disorderly conduct, noise, suspect, uh, suspicions, calls of some sort, which are kind of general uh, trespassing, fights, disputes of all kinds, property issues. Um, a couple weeks ago, myself and another officer responded to a fight over there in mid-morning. Uh, as soon as we were done, and it required a use of force to get the person under control. Seconds after getting that situation wrapped up, we got a report of another fight while we were still on scene, completely unrelated to what we were doing. Another use of force situation to get that person under control in custody. Um, that morning I wrote a letter to the commissioner in DCF saying this is an issue we need to address it. Um, they've kind of been stalling I guess for lack of a better word uh, unable to come up with any kind of resolution to help us there. Um, at its peak we've had 90 plus residents at the hilltop all with various issues of some sort health, substance use issues, um, you name it. So um, I specifically requested that they draw down the numbers to something a little more manageable. When the numbers are in the 50s or the 60s, I found that we were able to kind of stay on top of things. Uh, and it wasn't requiring five or six calls a day to respond to the hilltop. Um, they responded in kind, said that they're working on removing people who are problematic there but I don't know that they're gonna get the numbers in any neighborhood of where I'm requesting. Um, 
So just as just as a heads up, it concerns me because oh, and to top it all off, they've had 27 plus cases of COVID reported there as well. Um, so my concern is, as department and operations, if one of my officers get hurt responding to a call there and getting into a tussle with someone, or gets COVID, it's going to create a real problem. We're already at bare bones uh, managing shifts. Uh, this is a, kind of an issue that the state created, putting that many people into our community without any infrastructure in place. Um, and I find it a bit irresponsible on their part. Um, they have private security, but they don't have any law enforcement powers. Really, they're just kind of standing by another set of eyes over there. And they have referred to as lifestyle intervention people that they put there recently that are kind of peer-to-peer support, which hopefully may address some of the more minor problems. Uh, but there's really no law enforcement presence responding there other than us. Um, so. My concern, well, last Saturday or Saturday before was a good example. We had somebody lost on the trails above, above the pond. Well, we had officers out trying to deal with that. We got a call that there's a major fight out in the parking lot involving multiple people. Other agencies had to respond to deal with it. It's not their responsibility, it's our responsibility. The issues that have been at the hilltop are taking away from services that we provide to our community um, as a whole. So I just wanted to put that out there and let you guys know what's going on. And then trying to stay on top of it, but mm -hmm. uh, just so you're aware of you know, these conversations between me and the state. Mm -hmm. Is this housing thing, I thought that these certificates were gonna be stopping like April 15th, they're gonna keep no. throwing them out there? I've been told that there's some kind of transitioning to a new phase starting in June, but I'm not sure that that's gonna address the problems that we're having specifically at the time. Is the, the program uh, that provides the funding for this, is that COVID related? There is some federal funding, and that was part of why they implemented this program, is mm -hmm. to keep people separate mm -hmm. and not housed in uh, a single complex like mm -hmm. the Good Samaritan Haven down in Barrie. Um, but it's kind of gone beyond that scope now. Mm -hmm. I take it. From your talk with the state, you didn't get any uh, any uh, ideas on how to take it. I, I don't think that it's my place. I don't. I'm out of options. We yeah. only can do what we can do. Um, I was hoping the state would. Well, really, the only option is trying to draw down the numbers. There, yeah. they can't give me police officers to respond to calls. So, and part of the other issue is the owner seems reluctant to implement suggestions I've made to making a safer and more secure building. Um, the state is aware that he hasn't implemented these suggestions and really there's no consequences. Yeah. Can, can you put a dollar figure on your enforcement for just the hilltop? Is that something we could do? Uh, it's a little hard. Uh, it's, I mean, there's times when we've had to respond there, take somebody into custody, then bring them to a facility. Um, that's usually two officers involved just for safety issues to bring them somewhere uh, and have another officer come on duty and actually handle calls. Um, you know, we're, we're talking at an overtime rate of maybe $50 an hour for two officers mm -hmm. uh, for a three-hour period. That's just off the top of my head. Um, couldn't really put a figure on it other than you know, if you respond there six times a day and you say it's 30 minutes of response, you know, times where we get paid mm -hmm. per hour, what that is. Um, my concern is not so much the monetary amount, because we have discussed the town being compensated to some degree financially. It's being able to do our functions. If we were to lose another officer or two, I, we just wouldn't be able to respond to calls anymore literally like shuttering our doors and until people got better mm -hmm. and having other agencies to deal with the town's calls, which I don't want to happen, but we're getting dangerously close to that right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you got guys you know, working 20 hours of overtime a week as it is to cover these shifts, and if somebody else goes down, I, we're just not going to be able to do it. I noticed on the monthly budget you put out that uh, we were 30, 
thirty thousand over, and that's over. why I'm certain. Yeah, yeah. for overtime. Yeah. 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 And part of that is just, and, and this is an issue unique to to our department, but we can't find people to fill these positions, these vacant positions, and that's a problem statewide. Mm -hmm. So you, it seems to me you have absolute justification to request uh, state help and enforcement in this particular situation. And uh, because the state's policy caused it, it seems like the state police um, presence there would be pretty helpful, especially in the situation we're in now. Is that something we could draft a letter uh, as a town to, to request maybe just enforcement in this one area? Be required. Right. And I, I've been told flat out the state police aren't responding to calls there. Uh, and they're facing staffing issues similar to ours. <laughs> uh, but I wanted the board to know in case things don't improve there, and I would be surprised if they do, uh, that we may have to be more, more vocal in order to get some kind of resolution. I don't know about waiting to be more vocal. I think now's the time to I be more vocal. I say the time vocal. is now. Yeah, because if we wait, then. We lose an officer up there that gets injured, and it's too late. And I'm Vocal concerned, in. too, about liability. Any potential use of force that we have is a potential liability. liability. Most definitely. Yeah. And I don't like exposing yourself to additional sources of liability. So I looked at some numbers, or had somebody pull some numbers for me, um, or for calls going to the hilltop. And over the last 12 months, we have over 1,400 and 35 calls. That's to include um, Berlin Fire, Berry City Ambulance, Berry Town Ambulance, and uh, the Berlin Fast Squad to also um, PD. So we take everything out um, and leave just PD. That's over 1,200 calls just in the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. And, and to say the man hours, yeah, I mean, you could go there for a half hour, but you have two hours plus afterwards for follow-up, I'm sure, something like that. I mean, paperwork and mm -hmm. transport, mm -hmm. if that's the sure. case. Yeah. Um, at the very beginning, didn't the, the state have the county sheriff set there for some period of time? At times, they've contracted, the state's contracted with um, the Royal County Sheriff's Department mm -hmm. to guide staffing, but they're in a visible, mode anyway. They don't have any or won't in, uh, get themselves involved in a law enforcement capacity. So they're not going to go out and arrest anybody. Um, I can't say that I've ever seen them there in the year that I've been here. Um, so I don't know what their patrols look like and what their shifts look like when they're over there, when they're supposed to be over there. I know that they're facing staffing issues as well and have significantly cut down on their presence. But even when they were there, they were very constructive. They're kind of one notch above private security. Mm -hmm. So if the state police aren't going to act, then we're down. If if we were to fall down, man, what? I mean, what would we do? I mean, the only thing we could do is you know just get really vocal and make it so the state police has to step in, I guess, or. You know, I don't know. They give you some extra manpower from the state side or something. I'm not sure that that's, even if they were inclined to do that, I don't know that there's bodies out there to, to do it. I think really the only viable answer is for them to draw down numbers there so that it's something more manageable for our town. But if we draw down numbers there, just I'm just thinking out of the box, we draw down numbers there when we put them somewhere where is it? Is it going to be well not in my backyard situation? You know what I mean? Because we've got Barry, we got I mean because crimes on the rise, Montpelier, Barry, here, everywhere. Uh, it's not like we can send them to Burlington because there's crimes on the rise in Burlington too. I mean, I you know, if we had four more officers here, I then we'd be all right. We'd probably be in a better position. I'm just we were at a real thin ice right now. Yeah. And there's really no place for you to get four officers now anyways. No. No. And I don't like sending officers being by themselves over there uh, because you never know what the situation is going to evolve to. And fortunately for us, Barry and Montpelier have been very uh, helpful in responding here with a 
when we call for them. backup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't have to do that, but they're mm -hmm. very responsive. That's great. How do your radios work inside the building? Our radios are not operational most of the time. Inside. So when you send someone in there alone, they are alone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, if the dispatchers are on their game and they haven't heard from the officer in a minute or two, and they check in with them or try to check in with them, they haven't heard from them. They'll sometimes send another unit, but state police dispatch is stretched in, and sometimes we don't get those radio checks. Mm -hmm. I guess then what we need to do is figure a way to get vocal and who we get vocal with and how. Well, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah. The state's mm -hmm. attorney has been very supportive of the issues over there, um, so he is definitely in our corner. And who's that? Uh, Rory Peeble, mm -hmm. the state's attorney. Mm -hmm. And he's keeping in close contact with you? Yes. Good. Good. The program that's housing these people, is that in, in Human Services or? Department of Children and Family Services, DCF. Mm -hmm. Emergency housing and stuff, through DCF. And, and I recognize the need for sheltering people, I really do. But I also have a responsibility to the department and the community as a whole. Absolutely. And making sure we can take care of everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, have you sent any letters to these people, the commissioners? Or? Well, that's what prompted this conversation we had with the commissioner's office last Thursday, uh, where I was told that they're going to be removing some of the more pro problematic guests. But I don't know if that means we'll remove them and then replace them with 10 more people yeah. that potentially might cause even more problems, or we're just going to remove people and see you know, what, we, what we're at with those numbers. Well, why don't you and Vince get together, draft a letter to uh, the commissioner and to the governor and bring it back to us and we'll see if we can sign it, send it on. <laughs> Not that I think we'll have much more luck to you. No, but I, I think it's important that we be vocal in case yes. something does happen yep. on the record that oh, we brought it to someone's attention. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Chief? No. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, and to your staff as well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions for the Chief while well, he's here? If not, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, discussion on highway and police radio system. <laughs> so, you have a, uh, the original quote in your package uh, from Burlington Communication Systems. Uh, I don't have the revised quote that reflects the numbers for the police department yet. Um, so I'll, I'll, have a, I'll have that for the next meeting, hopefully. Uh, I'll have that for this one. We didn't get it. Um, the idea behind this is, again, we have a lot of dead spots in town for both the police and for the highway on uh, communication systems, the old radio system that, that they both have. Um, I've talked to Burlington Communications and for a digital system. They can get us up on the tower at a reduced rate because they have uh, equipment up there now that they can put us in a rack, that they can put us in of theirs at a reduced rate so we don't have to go directly through the tower. Um, he said it's probably at least a 50% reduction, so it would be somewhere in the range of maybe between $200 and $300 a month for that uh, to get us up there with the new digital radios um, to outfit the highway. The highway doesn't need 100% new because they already have some digital radios. Um, that quote's pretty accurate for the highway uh, of what they would need. Um, on top of that, we do have some, uh, some funds al already uh, to cover a portion of that on the highway side for the radios. Uh, I think it's 11000 Um Well, all in all, it would be like 17000 okay. I have 11000 just in the highway equipment, but we do have highway materials, which I have another 7000 in. Okay. So, and again, this is also something that ARPA funds... Uh, could be considered for as well. Uh, the police, they need a few more radios uh, than what they have to bring them up to the digital uh, level and obviously still have the ability to communicate with uh, the surrounding towns and the state police. Um, so that's, that's the quote that I, I can't even estimate right now because they haven't got back to me on that. They were still working on it uh, as of last week. Uh, and also uh, on the highway department, their radios will also be set up in a way where they'll still have ability to talk surrounding towns as well if need be. 
Uh, so uh, that's the intent of it, again, is to just upgrade the system so that there's no dead spots on the other side of the mountain or over in spots in the, in the uh, junction road, and you had another dead spot, I think, somewhere else as well. And the police basically have the same dead spots when they're out there with their radios as well as the highway crew. Chief, the, the, the mobile radios, there's five, is that for our, your cruisers? Um, I'm not sure. No, that, sure most of the notes on there are for the highway department. For the highway? Yeah, we're okay. not in that quote. Okay. Yeah. How many cruisers? We have four cruisers at a time. Okay. And you're going to be upgrading the four? Some of those are digital already. Okay. Uh, Burlington Communications checking out the models that they have, that they provided in the information on to see which ones would need to be replaced, which ones could still be used on the system. And going back to the hilltop and having a problem transmitting outside that building, um, do any of your cruisers have repeaters in them? No. Have we thought about that? Um, I don't know historically if we have or not. No, I don't. That hasn't been part of the discussion no. between us on it. And so that would assist you on, on communicating outside the, from inside the building Probably, to your yeah. cruiser, which would then pump it out higher. The if they had repeaters in the cruisers. The, the other thing, is, again, going digital and a little bit higher output may may also. Uh, again, I'm waiting to hear uh, what Burlington Communication says with regard to the police on that as well. So. What's the uh, total on this upgrade? On the, on the one you have there, I think it's uh, second page. Nineteen five yeah, twenty five right seven. It's right around twenty grand on that one right there. Mm -hmm. That's just. I only got one page. It's, right it's on, on the back. Yeah, it's on the back. Double right. sided. Right. Yeah. There we go. Save save some paper on that. And how much, Diane, did you say was in the budgets? Um, in the reserve, I have like 17000 for the highway. I do have you know, some for police, but we're not talking about police right now. Right. Okay. We will be shortly. Once, once I get that, obviously I'll bring that. So this is in. just on the highway that's, department? Yep, that's just the highway as it stands right now. And there's seventeen, mm -hmm. but then you said the other qualifies as the ARPA funds? Yep. Tim, did I miss anything? You want to add anything to that? No, well, I think it's pretty much covered. It's just some of the radios are old, and some of them are, I forget the exact number, but some of the newer trucks have been upgraded over the recent years with newer radios, but they still have a few that if you, the greater still is your old radio, the loader, I think the estimator, they were just kind of passed on through, not so much as the trucks. The trucks usually get a new one every, if it's needed, they get a new one. So yeah, like Saturday, I was trying to talk to Mike. And I'm on Jonesbrook, he's on Barlett Hill. We couldn't even talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So it's about 2,000 more than what we have in the budget. In reserves, yeah. In reserve. Yeah. What's your, what's your budget percentage on the highway department now? So it looks like right now, I get up total highway. We still, okay, we have like the budget was like a 1111000 and we have spent 720000 to date. So we still have an additional 390000 potentially to spend. 
And we, we are in the ninth month, so we still got another three months to go after this. Unfortunately, we're in the spring months, too. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right where we'll be doing other construction work. Yeah. Is there any savings that we take in and do, well, you wouldn't know yet because you don't know the police if we do it all at once. Right. That, that's what I'm hoping to find out. We can couple them. And I've asked them that question, right? What can we look at for savings from a labor standpoint if we do everything at once? Yeah. You know, what's that look like for us? Well, you'll also be buying a few more radios to boot. Yep. A little bit more of a volume discount as well. So, and I, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but um, we're also applying for grants, federal grants, for uh, a variety of technical assistance, radios included. But that's kind of rolling the dice whether or not that's going to yeah. come to fruition. And it could be months and months before we hear an answer. So, um, we are seeking alternatives. Sources, you know, we, if it's possible, we may be able to be compensated for whatever expense we lay out. Well, how's the board feel about this? We probably should wait till we get the total estimate. Yeah, well, that's what I'm going to recommend, right? Is I'm going to try to have it for the next board meeting as an update, mm -hmm. and then at that point, maybe we can make the decision. The board can make the decision with with that information. Do we want to do we want to move forward or not at that point in time? Yeah. I think or do a hybrid of some type. Well, I think probably, I mean, I don't think there's much choice other than to uh, upgrade if we, if they're not be able, if they're not being able to talk to each other. Yeah. Just from an efficiency standpoint. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. Well, safety as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I would probably ask them about repeaters and how that might benefit. Yep. Um, the police department. Um, do, you, do you have an idea? Did they give you an idea of turnaround time on this? I think you got a long time before you might get a radio. No, actually, they uh, they thought they could do that before the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. Have everything everything done if, if we do that. But again, it's subject to change. If somebody comes yeah. in tomorrow and cleans them out, so they'll so be then obviously it'll be a long wait. But they were they were pretty confident that they could get this done timely for us. Good. Well, I would take and say and put this on the next agenda. Yep. Will do. Thank you. Good. Anything else on this? Chief, you want anything to add at this one? Oh, I'm good. You think, Tim? I'm good. Okay, thank you very much, Chief. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. And next is... Uh, thank you for the grading as well. Finally, 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 one or two days in a while. And next is discussion on highway pickup. Um, yeah, Tim. So they, got, they do have the couples in their package. Okay. I'll agree. Thanks, Chief. Thank you again. Good night. So as you guys know, well, excuse me, we're here. We budgeted last year for, for this upcoming year for uh, to replace the 2015 pickup truck along with the, the other 10 wheeler. So after town meeting there, I talked with Vince and I went and got some quotes from the three dealerships right here in the area. In Kobe's Capital and uh, McGee. And uh, we waited our 30 days past town meeting. And they're all as comparable as comparable can be with them, the three dealerships. We're about 20000 cheaper on Chevy. Why is that? Oh, it's a Chevy. <laughs> These are all regular, regular bed trucks? They're crew cab. Chassis? So, or? Yeah. No, they're crew they're, cab. They're, they're one pounds, but they're the same as what we have now. It's a pickup. Single wheel crew cab. 
we have a three quarters done, but we pulled the chipper, and it's a little much mm -hmm. for it. So, so we don't have a single wheel. Would you have to order this thing? Yes. Okay. So you, it wouldn't be here till like FY23 or something. Yeah. Everybody says so. Capital and Sh and Cody's both said that they figured right around eight weeks. McGee said it be four to six months. <laughs> no. How how soon did Cody say they could get it? Eight weeks. Eight weeks. What's the mile mileage on the trade? Uh, it's roughly about fifty five thousand right now. And that's a diesel, diesel as well? Yeah, they're all diesel. Mm -hmm. So uh, Cody Chevrolet is $3,000 under the rest of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sizable yeah, the difference. The other two are right around <clears throat> yeah, 30 there. Seven hundred dollars difference between the two of them. Cody is three thousand. What am I missing? Oh, okay. Twenty-eight on the base truck. Sixty-four. Cody is also off offering a municipal discount too. Yeah, I'm not sure why the other two didn't. Because I went and sat down with them and talked it all through and told them this and everything else. And no. And is this anything to be tied into the state bid for trucks? I don't know. Do it's they the have same. To it's, it's the municipal pricing is the it's government pricing is what okay. they all put in for government pricing in there. I'm pretty sure I saw it in all of them. I see one for government fees. I don't see anything about oh, government. Okay. <laughs> That's where I get that one. But yeah. Do you have a preference or recommendation of the three? Um, my recommendation would be to go with Cody's. It's a little cheaper. And they seem to be more of the and that's thing a, that they'll get it faster. Not that that means. And that's a Duramax with the Allison mm -hmm. transmission versus a Ford. Yeah, Allison 10 speed automatic. What do you currently have? Uh, it's a GMC that we currently have. How's the service on it? We really haven't done a whole lot to it. It's seven years old. Showing it? yep. its age. It's stuck in show its age. The frame is pretty rusty. Well, it's certainly giving you enough for it. Yeah, I was very surprised that <laughs> that, was, uh, that was the trade in value. I didn't really think that it was going to be that high. Back in November, it would have been more. Probably. <laughs> yeah. MMR was crazy in November on them. It was crazy. It's starting to come down now, so. Do we have the money for this, Diane? Not until FY23. It's not an FY22 money. So July 1st, we have the money. And it won't be ready till then anyway. Yeah, okay. and they all know that, too. You know I mean, they all knew that it's for after July 1st. Yeah. Are there any options under the Cody Chevrolet recommendation? I see the total options comes to 14870 Are there any options that you could live without or that would bring that price down to That's bring the bottom even lower? Pretty much. Kind of not much drill. 
steps and stuff like that that mm -hmm. we normally use. But and that's just an LT work truck. It's not an LT two. Oh. It's just a regular. Because they all did say that they're not building work trucks. Yeah. Well, that LT is now the new. Yeah. <laughs> that's the new work yeah. truck. Yeah. Your motion on this? You're looking for the Chevy? I guess uh, I would make the motion to move forward with the purchase of the, the Chevy truck for the price of. Is that going to change anything? Is that, should we even put the price in there? Not that I'm aware, like, I'm, I'm not sure if, you know, I mean, that's the quote that okay. he gave me. From Cody's, the purchase from Cody's. How about the, yeah, purchase from Cody's for the price on the estimate? Second. Second? I second the motion. Any further discussion? Now, is that going to, um, the purchase of the truck is one thing, but the changing over the radios and everything else is additional? Yeah, um, that I can probably, I can cover the, that out of my maintenance budget, I would okay. assume. That's kind of where I was, because... If, if the timing's right, I'm just going to... Well, think. that's... If the timing's right, the new radios could be installed we directly We had kind of discussed awesome. that yeah. as well. As we'll save that fee. Whether that was going to be there started. or not, and then... Um, I didn't price in the changing of the plow, depending on who gets it. They all do different things, because we're going to keep the plow. So like, I think sometimes they do them in-house, and sometimes they ship them over to McGee. Yeah. Because there's a uh, Fisher dealer for Central Vermont, so. Are the mounts the same? Right. They the will not be the same. You'll need new push bars. Push plates and probably a wiring harness yeah. for the headlights. The rest oh, yeah. of it, yeah. the rest of it will all switch over the power, the power cords, the the module, and the fish stick, and you'll just need a headlight wiring harness and a new push plates because the frames are different on the newer trucks. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And the uh, lights? Brad, just a question for Mr. Michael. Yeah, Dave. Yeah, what's the estimate? The estimate for that truck is, uh, uh, total sales price is 26907 That's with Thank the trade. Is that? That's with the trade. Yeah, that's with, that's with the trade. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else on this? Does this? It, it, I'm, I'm suspecting that it's a 3500. Has a heavier wiring package in this truck, right? For the lights and stuff. Yeah, they're all the, on the 3500. All, all three of them are the plow prep package. Okay. Um, oh yeah, now I see it. <laughs> so, yeah. so they all have well now like two alternators in them. They're, there's a 250 and a, or a 220 and a. They come with 16. the engine block heaters and everything. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Green on power right away work. Yeah, they want to install a uh, power pole at the subdivision up here on Scott Hill next to the uh, cemetery, just beyond the cemetery where that little development's going in, and run run a line from there over to the, the power pole on the Allen Movie property where the subdivision's going to be area over the road. How many lots are going in there? I see four. Four lots four or three. I believe it's four in total. Yep. 
I make a motion to approve the permit number 22-010 dated February 25th, 2022 um, for the GMP right of way permit for the Moody subdivision. I'll second that. Any other discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 22-19 for payroll from March 13, 2022 to March 26, 2022 paid on March 30th in the amount of $48,599.30. Also payable warrant 22-G19 with checks 21900 to 21936 in the amount of $95,148.94. And the February trial balance report, February budget status report, March delinquent tax report, March reconciled general fund, and sewer water checking accounts. I'll second that. Any discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, your additions to the agenda events? Oh, yes. Okay. Security system update. So the last time we talked, we um, was asked to go back and, and look at what we could do in reducing the uh, the key fob entries. Uh, had them come in, we did another visit. We brought it down to, to two exterior doors for the key fob entries. Everything else would remain with the key lock. Um, believe it or not, that reduced the uh, reduced it by about ten grand. So you you should have. A, I sent the new page as well. Uh, for the quote, the, the 15 grand was reduced to, to uh, 5709 uh, by doing that. We didn't change any of the others. I did get a little more clarity from him on the others. Um, one of the questions was what was happening at the at the police with the cameras and things. They're 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 all new cameras for them to upgrade those um, uh, to a better camera, as well as the additional cameras. They would upgrade all of those. Um, so that was. Yeah, they would have a fully functional system, um, visual, all four corners of the building now. They, they'd have 360 view around here. And all the, the window security on the uh, police side of things. And over at the garage, he would have 360 view around the outside of the garage and one camera inside the garage as well um, with, within these quotes. And again, he's, he's holding the price increase that he gave us before, back in uh, September, October. That's great. And again, these are also qualified for the ARPA funds. Now, the ARPA funds, does that have to be paid? Is the bill is paid by us and we get reimbursed, or is that paid directly through the um, I can take it right. We have money in the ARPA funds right now in a separate account, so I can just take it out of there. And how long is this quote good for? Uh, it's 30 days. And it's already been 60, <laughs> plus or minus. Okay. But he's holding it. Again, you know, we went back and... Uh, he, uh, he had a lot of nice things to say about working with the town, working with the police, and what he's already done. And um, he's happy to, to have the work from us. So. Okay. Hear a motion on this? I didn't get to all the numbers, but I, I didn't right. have it in front so of me moved. either. I can, I can give you it. Yeah. I'll just see that. <laughs> I make a motion to move forward with this. this it's a security the, system. The difference the is this, is the, this one has been reduced to, to that amount, and these others stand as they are. Security system that is reduced from by 5709.50. Is that what? That's that one, and then each of those other sheets are also. Okay. All right. Do we have a total of all of them? What was the? I, I didn't total them up this okay. time. 5709.50. Twenty-five. Give me a second here. <laughs> uh, Six thousand seven thirty-one. 
Mm -hmm. And it's this back page on this five thousand seven oh nine fifty. Okay, so that'd be uh, nineteen thousand nine hundred and thirteen fifty. So I'd make a motion to go with round round hill fence and security, not to exceed the nineteen thousand nine thirteen for the security system for the complex as described within the quote. Second. 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 Okay. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And what was your other one? Another one? You have a letter in your um, in your package as well. This is in regards to the uh, national fitness campaign and the um, that outdoor fitness center we talked about some time ago uh, to go over in the new town center. Um, the issue comes down to the timing and the funding. Um, the risk um, that we're being asked to consider is that the hospital is, hasn't approved the budget yet and they're not going to approve it till after the deadline has passed. So the, the risk is basically we're being asked to uh, front uh, about $130,000 for this that the hospital was going to contribute. Um, but they may or they may not. It, it hasn't passed their budget screening process yet, and it won't uh, for some time. So they, uh, they were looking for us to provide this letter basically saying that we're willing to, uh, <coughs> to take that risk and put that money up front, commit it from the town. I'm not willing to commit no. to that under yeah. those circumstances. Myself it feels the same way. <laughs> it, it, exactly. I was asked to bring it. Yeah. I brought yeah. it. Yeah. It's for the for the board to <laughs> debate and and uh, and vote on. But uh, well, since the debate is over, it's it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a money item. We'd have to put it on the next agenda, but I guess we can skip it. Yeah. Yeah. I will. Uh, I will uh, let everyone know. Uh, no, it's it's. Uh, Dead at this point. And uh, I'd like to update you on the uh, the other thing I was asked was the uh, assistant town treasurer position. Uh, I'd like to update the board on the, the progress that we've made on that. So I spoke with um, Bonnie Wanager at the Regional Planning Commission about the uh, hiring environment. What are other towns doing? Um, what do the rates look like? Uh, how's that going? And she kind of chuckled at me and said, are you crazy? This is not the time for municipalities to be hiring. Basically, it's it's tough. Um, there's there's a lot of municipalities that out there looking for a lot of people. Um, the wages are extremely uh, difficult to meet some of the expectations um, that are out there now as well, even for um, new college grads, because a lot of the um, accounting firms are snapping them up at some pretty premium rates as well. But that doesn't mean it's all that bad because after talking with her, getting that lovely information, uh, I spoke with uh, Norwich University on their intern program. They were very upbeat about that. They have a, uh, a program that links theirs to basically hundreds of universities and colleges um, in the Northeast and around the country and locally here in the state as well. Um, and they, they advertise it, not only in-house, but on, on a platform called Handshake that goes to the other universities with the job description, the expectations, and all those, all those things. Um, it's out there now. I uh, took advantage of that program, and it's, it's out there. And again, it just went out last week, um, so we don't have any interest yet coming in, no applications and, and so on. Um, but it's out there. He was pretty excited to... to get us on board to start working with them. Uh, from an intern perspective, he asked if we would consider, um, you know, a junior, not necessarily a senior, maybe even part-time. Uh, we, we talked a little bit, and if it's, if it's the right candidate um, that meets expectations and passes Diane's approval, um, I said yes, we'd be willing to consider that as well. So, again, when we start talking about the budget, what it's going to cost, 
we don't know until we know um, what type of candidate we're going to go with, whether it's full-time right out of the gate or a part-time intern. Mm -hmm. This could lead us to either one. It just depends on going through the interview process and the candidate that we decide to uh, move forward with. And then uh, one other person that I spoke to was a lady by the name of Zoe Cartwright out of the Creative Workforce Solutions that's tied with the state. She's got an office in Barrie. Um, she said that she has uh, some interesting programs that uh, she can look at as well and resources. Uh, so she also has the information and is soliciting for candidates for us as well there. Um, so it's, it's moving forward. Um, it's, we're in a lot better position than we were a couple of weeks ago, I believe, on this. Um, and we just have to, uh, you know, keep beating the brush, brush until we uh, get some candidates to start speaking to with regards to that. Mm -hmm. So that's the quick update on that. And the last one that I have for now, Mr. Town, is the, uh, again, there's a letter I was asked by Heidenberg Properties to provide to the select board that they mailed me. They're coming in front of the DRB. Uh, tomorrow night, I believe, with the 5th. Um, and it's all with regards to the new town center, their position on the road um, to be built, uh, and, the, and the financing of uh, that road relocation as well. Again, it's just, there's nothing to decide on this. This is information for you. Our attorney has not reviewed this yet. He was on vacation last week when I got this. Uh, so he'll, uh, he'll have that on his desk tomorrow. Uh, and I'll be talking with him with regards to how we want to formulate a response and start a discussion with the mall with regards to that. And again, at some point, the mall will want to come in and talk to the board directly about it as well. Absolutely. So that's coming to a meeting near you sometime soon. Yep. Where's, where's the DRB board meeting held? Right here. Right here. What time is that? Uh, I believe they're starting at. I'll double check. Six? It's on the calendar. I think they're starting at six. six. And that's tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening. Yeah. I'll double check just to make sure. Could be seven. March, April fifth. Seven. Seven p.m. tomorrow night, right here. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Vince? <laughs> Um, not going to save anything for a round table? No. <laughs> no I'm done. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, round table? Dave? I don't have anything. Hello? No, not tonight. Thank you. Carol, I'd be interested in an update uh, about uh, projected road opening. <laughs> Since you had such a... <laughs> I was going to ask that. Yeah. Anybody interested in roads? So it's, it's been an interesting year for roads. Um, do we have a projected opening for Crosstown? No. Why? It's going to rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to get worse before it gets better okay. for a short period of time. If, if I had to guess, maybe two weeks. The end of the second week, maybe. Um, we probably got some calls on some of the other roads. I can tell you Tim's approach right now, uh, he actually asked me to go out and look at some roads today, so I, I did a bit of a tour. Um, Kind of agree with his assessment. He's, he's tackling them from worst to not so bad uh, with regards to the calls as they're coming in. I think he did, he did some work on Crosstown today and Vine Street. I think he got, he, he, was, he was planning on maybe even a little Vine Street tomorrow, but he finished that today. Uh, I believe tomorrow he's going down to Dog River and then over on Jones Brook and then over to Bartlett Hill while he's there. Um, so that'll be uh, starting tomorrow based on how much he can get done each day and before the rain makes it soup again. Again, I think what a lot of the, maybe the newer residents, I don't know, um, don't understand is um, if it's raining and the frost is coming out, he's not going to put trucks on the road on that because it's just going to make it worse. He could just, it's just a waste of time. Um, so I'm asking people as they call to be patient. We're tackling them by priority, um, you know, from the worst to and then work backwards to, to get them done. So, but I expect Crosstown's going to be another couple of weeks, unfortunately. I personally behind whatever Tim feels is the way to do it. That's just that's. I mean, he's a professional. We hired him. Yeah. You know, he takes care of our roads, so I support him. We've had knock on wood. We've had some pretty good luck with the roads this year compared to some of the surrounding towns. <laughs> Joe. Uh, I guess I, 
I would just like to say thank you very much to Rosemary for her years of service mm -hmm. and for all the years I've been here in, in Berlin and uh, services she has provided me personally. Uh, any other? Uh, any others? Any else? That way. No. If not, I have nothing. Um, no executive session. No. I'd make a motion then to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We're adjourned.